is Stefan Nitzov. Stefan, I've heard, uh, has been in the blockchain community since it started, and he is the leader of the Norwegian Bitcoin Association. In addition, he is a solution architect at Sky Solutions, so we are very happy to have you here today. So give, it, give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk about uh, digitalization and how we can seamlessly integrate blockchain with ERP systems. So just shortly about me, um, Solution Architect, as, as you heard, a long time in the IT, specializing in integrations between SAP systems and, and other systems. Uh, the last two years I've been specializing in integrating SAP with the blockchain and the public blockchains. Uh, I'm also the founder of the Norwegian Blockchain, Bitcoin and Blockchain Association, as you heard. Uh, I haven't been in blockchain community since it started really, but around 2012, so rather early. So I'm starting with a bold statement. Blockchain is humanity's most important invention. So that's not the only me saying that. Uh, Gartner saying something in that style also, blockchain will fundamentally change our society. And they list it in their top 10 strategic technology for this year. IBM, also a big player in this as we have here today, blockchain will fundamentally change the way we do business. So society will be changed, business will be changed. And also SAP says the same, they just joined uh, a hyperledger consortium. Uh, World Economic Forum is talking about blockchain. Uh, the World Food Program are using blockchain to help uh, poor people. So, what is blockchain? I'm going to try to explain it more, not in so technical terms, but more an overview of it. So, blockchain is a new development platform. Most of everything will be developed in some kind of way in blockchain or together with blockchain te technology. It's a trust-based service layer. So it's a service layer that offers us P2P or peer-to-peer, person-to-person trust without middlemen, as we have heard also here today. It's also a utility network, just like our electricity network and internet today. It's a utility network where we can store and transfer values. But the important thing is that we can do this in real time. It's also a new global marketplace. So just as the internet or the web economy has been very growing very much the last uh, 20 years, uh, many think that the, the Bitcoin economy, the blockchain economy will also be even bigger than that. So, Blockchain is then global, neutral, immutable, and distributed, and we see it as a single source of truth, single source of truth that gets more and more secure during time and volume in comparison to normal databases that gets less and less secure with time and volume. So what I'm going to look into the, today is the digitalization that most companies are looking into today and how we can in integrate that seamlessly with the blockchain. So first of all, I would like to point out the, the difference between digitization and the digitalization. So digitization is just a normal, where we take the, the current documents, we take the invoice, we take the order, and we just put it on a scanner and we scan it and then we store it electronically as a, as a copy of the paper but we still have the paper. Digitalization starts from the beginning and goes all to the end, where we are changing the whole business processes to be digital. So uh, the, all the business processes is, so, is supposed to be digital. And we have a digital workplace, a digital value chain. So this is where it gets interesting to combine with an ERP system, because an ERP system an ERP system is what all, all companies have, but mostly the big corporations have the enterprise resource planning system, 
their, their back-end IT systems where they can handle production planning, processes, uh, production uh, planning, manufacturing, marketing and sales, HR and everything that the a company needs to have control of. And these ERP systems are very robust and they have support for all business processes that company needs or, or, and are using a lot today. But they are, they are centralized, they are in one company or one group of uh, companies. So what we like to do then is to digitize by incorporating blockchain with the ERP system. So we have the blockchain, we have our ERP systems with the support for all the business processes and we want to make a seamless integration between these two. Today, before blockchain, the old way of integration and the old way of a value chain was all different partners with their own database, their own siloed database with their own information. So uh, a customer has their own data and, and the manufacturer or the retail company has their data. And you know, if we have two databases, it will be two versions of the truth. And that always come, or very often comes through our trouble when we, we say, I ordered a thousand uh, iPhones, but I received uh, 900. Which database is the true one? Yeah, of course, mine is true, but the other one also says mine is true. So that is a problem. And today, we also have a problem that if we have a value chain like this and we have a customer out here in the far end, what happens is that the supplier supplies to the supplier, the supplier to the producer, the producer to the distributor, and so on and so on. Which means that they all have to take into account for, for variations. They have, they have a, a margin of, they produce a little bit more to be on the secure side. They order a little bit more to be secure, to have a backup, and so on and so on. That means that if the customer changes something, it's an enormous cost all the way down in, in the value chain because there is so many different steps and so many different owners of the information and they don't really know ex ex each other. What they know is only, only the supplier and the sub-supplier knows about their business. They have no idea what happens back here. And so for every it's silent between two or two or two of them all the time. And Today we are communicating, if it's good, we are communicating electronically. A lot of companies are still using paper invoices and paper orders. But let's take it one step further. They are using like old AS400 artifacts. They are using EDI with a broker, AS2 communication and so on. And then we come to the banks. Many times we are using file transfers still to the bank because of that it's only once a week or once a month. We have logistics company maybe communicating with email. We have customs maybe using faxes in many countries. Faxes is, uh, is uh, what, except from, from the original, they can still use fax, but not email or, or any digital copies yet. And more, more banks and more file transfer. So we have a lot of different communications and more or less it's a, it's a mess. And mail service. So what we want to achieve is to have one single source of the truth by the blockchain. So then we have the blockchain, which is global, immutable, distributed, peer-to-peer, -peer, secure, transparent, open access, programmable, neutral, all these things that you know about what an open blockchain is, and censorship resistant. That we want to connect to the co companies, but only with one, one connection per company, they, they just have one integration to the blockchain. Which means that all participants have access to the relevant information in real time. We can also connect banks to this. Direct communication to logistics and customs as we had in, in the previous picture. And it means that all participants can now communicate with each other within one communication channel, which is secured and also in real time. So now, 
all the suppliers and all the producers, they can know information from the client, but only the information they are, are authorized to, to read, of course. Everybody cannot read everything, only the things that they are authorized to. But the, but the supplier and the producer for a specific client, for a specific product, have the information that they need and they can see directly if, if the client changed the order, want to have more or less or other features, they can directly see it and get the information about it. So the benefits we have by integrating blockchain with ERP is that we have this single source of truth. We have we are also able to secure proof in the blockchain. We have this global traceability, which is a huge thing also for big global corporations today to be able to globally trace their products, where they are coming from, not only internally, but also with all their sub-suppliers and, and partners around the world. Just look at the car factory, for example. They, have, they are not making one car in one country, they are just putting together a lot of parts that comes from all over the world, from different suppliers. And they really need some kind of global traceability. And by using blockchain, it's a, it's a perfect match. We can make secure multilateral business processes. Today, business processes is mostly internally in a company. My company starts a business process and, and I stop a business process. But with blockchain, we can actually have business processes that goes along different companies. And one company can start the business process and another can end it. We have the possibility to create tokens within the, or with the, between the companies. We can transfer values, of course, and assets. And all, all, uh, all this we can do then independently between untrusted partners and without middlemen, of course. We could do all this before also with a central database, but with a central database it's always a problem that someone owns that central database and it can be attacked, it can be brought down, it could be a fire, it could be an electrical power out. That cannot happen with the blockchain solution. Yes? Do you store all the data in the blockchain? Not in the blockchain, but a, a layer below, in a, in a second layer. So we have a, yeah. So what we, what we get with all this is increased security and increased trust between partners. We get increased transparency and increased efficiency and increased competitiveness. Because if you have a product that is very good, you cannot prove it that it is good. Lower cost, lower fees, lower risk and lower administration. So it just, it's just a lot of positive points along this way. We also get secure business-to-business -business communication here with cryptographically encrypted <coughs> messages between them. Uh, we can sign messages, of course. This is all normal cryptographic technology that we can use today also, but it is normally a very expensive solution to start using this. So company only do it when they really, really need secure solutions. By using blockchain and using the technology here, we could use it, do it much more cheap. Cryptographically timestamped, cryptographic non-repudiation, so we can send messages and we can prove that the receiver has received them. They cannot deny that they have received the message. Also, it's all standard functionality in, uh, in communication today, but what we do here is that one company only have to connect to the blockchain and not connect to eat all the other companies which all have different kind of encryptions and standards and so on. We are storing these uh, documents then in a single source of truth. Uh, we can send message between the peers, like contracts, orders, bill of lading, invoices, payments, and so on. All the normal steps that a company uh, are using today. So I have a, a small example like this. We have two companies, company A and company B. So company B creates a contract with company A. They do that today. That's a normal business process. That's a normal, most normal thing in the world for a company. But 
Now we can add the security with blockchain and the single source of truth. They, they, ex they create an order, they pay the order and everything of them storing and locking in the blockchain. They pay the invoice and we are sending the delivery. And now everything is stored in the blockchain as a proof. So another good thing with the blockchain is that we, we can also store info product information in the blockchain. So we can trace back what, what kind of raw material, material has been used in the, in the, in the product. Uh, what location has it been produced in? Uh, health, safety and, and environment stuff, we can see that this thing has not been created by child labor or in other poor environment. It's, it's not uh, hazardous for the environment. We can know the production date, we can know sub-components, energy use, production, temperature, pressure, speed and everything like that, so vibrations. I'm going to show a picture with this that says more. So we have three companies, a manufacturer, component manufacturers and assembly and so on. So the, com the manufacturer can then store data like the place, source and so on. The assembly can then store information like time, when it's produced, energy and so on. The processor can then store information like temperatures, uh, speed, uh, pressures and so on. And all this information we can, we can gather with Internet of Things sensors. And as we have heard in some other uh, talks here today, we can make Internet of Things sensors very secure, so they can actually produce a proof up to the blockchain. Uh, logistics, temperature, temperatures, variations, CO2, and where it is stored. So some product is very important where they are stored, how long they are stored, like cheese and wines and so on. An example uh, where they have used this is a proof of concept where they are tracking fish. So when you are in your shop, you take up the fish, uh, the packet of fish, you can just scan the barcode and then you get the information from the whole value chain back. When it was fished, uh, in what sea, and how has it been transported? In, uh, has it ever been above zero degrees or something like that? And we can even get the, the name of the fisherman sometimes, or at least the name of the boat. This is very good if you have a good fish product. It's not very good if you have a three-month-old fish, and then, you, then you wouldn't like to do this, of course. But if you have a good product, you can now really prove it. And of course, then you have an advantage and you can take a higher price for it. Another very important thing is uh, dispute resolution. Every company has problems with dispute resolution. So like the, the example, I order a thousand iPhones, but I receive an invoice of 1200 iPhones. Yeah, where, where is the error? Have I ordered wrong or have they sent wrong? By using the blockchain where we have one single source of truth, we can use smart contracts to start with. And then we can solve most of the things uh, direct, directly, automatically with the smart contract. If that is not enough, we can use in, uh, smart uh, artificial intelligence. And, but still we have some manual work to do like 5 to 25 percent, but it's still a huge deal as IBM had an example of here. I will, yeah, we can transfer assets uh, for audit and compliance, this is very important uh, and very, we can very easily make compliance and make audits automatically with using HDRM to store identities, uh, educations uh, certificates and so on. And we can make distributed marketplaces with this solution. So but very shortly what we offer from Sky, uh, blockchain presentation courses, workshops, we can help with uh, develop strategies within blockchains and so on, help with the uh, proof of concepts. I'm not going to bore you too much with that. So that's my presentation for today. Thank you very much.